tired, but I gotta do it. And let's go. Let's get it. You know what I mean? So I'm still figuring out exactly where I'm gonna end up, but I know event planning is one of the main things, company management, production management, and also Probably TV and film, television and film. I, my first, probably to get in the door, production assistant, somewhere like that, but I know that's not my last stop. But those are my dreams. And you'll, you'll, you'll try all of those things and maybe one or two may work out and they all work out, but I mean, it's a lot of work. And that's where, I mean, I don't know if you think this about people with your dreams, it's, it's hard. It's a lot of work people that you're coming in contact with that you probably would not come in contact with, maybe some people that you like, some people that you don't, especially with the style. I mean, even the event planning. I mean, I started, I did weddings too, which I did not like. Um, because you're with someone for a year, I don't want to be with anybody at all. Um, <clears throat> but some people do. Um, and they're nervous, but it was, it was, it was easy because I've never met a bride who didn't know what they wanted, and they say that young women and girls think about their weddings from the time that they are little girls. I don't know if that's true, but when by the time that they came to me, <laughs> by the time they came to me, they were ready. Um, but I also found that the, the grooms got involved, and it was a bit much. Yeah, for me, because you were dealing with two, the guys like, oh yeah, yeah. So much so, the bride, well, the, the brides that I worked with, pretty much knew everything, didn't they? The guys had more of the questions, and, you know, this is what I want to see, and, you know, all of those kinds of things. So I kind of knew that that wasn't, we just kind of moved away from that. Um, but, um, you know, getting into the, um, the fashion, too, when I see it as a stylist, it is really, it's, did anybody watch Rachel Zoe? Yes. But, uh, there's a reason that she's like this, because it really is like that. When people, the higher the dollar amount, the more expectation. You are on call. And I just, you know, it was fun at the beginning. And was, I wanted to prove to myself that I could do it. You know, that you really need to know what that person's style is, because it's not your style. It's their style that you're picking up. Even for event planning, when you're meeting your customer, your, your client, you, if they want a pink elephant in the middle of the room, or whatever it is, you give it. You give it. I mean, if that's what they want. Um, and I found that, you know, you do it, but you find out if that's something that you want to do long term, or do you have the temperament for it? I did not have the temperament for it. Um, I learned a lot. Um, like the. You know, when, when I go in front of the camera, I'm going to talk about something where lecture. You have the the option of turning the channel if you don't like what I'm saying, or getting up, or texting while I'm talking. But um, you can, um, or I, or tweeting between, between every time. I'm doing okay. <laughs> um, I'm doing whatever it is that you want to do and having fun. I think when you find out what you want to do, it should be fun. And that's when I used to get nervous about going on TV and stuff like that. Like, what do you do with the butterflies? What do you do when you're about to talk? And she's like, channel them into the adrenaline. And when I would go out, I would always start off with a joke because it relaxed me until I really got the point of it. Uh, and now it's, it's pretty much second nature. You just kind of go on and do the thing and try to remember what it is, the message that you want. Um, I can't talk about ever about my dreams. Um, so it's gonna be hard for me to have you, but cause like, what were you thinking? Um, really, um, like everyone said, I mean, since a young age, I've always been into theater and the arts. Um, but it hasn't been until recently, especially this summer, that I kind of found a specific niche that, that I'm passionate about that I spend my private leisurely time researching on. Um, and that's like. How to word this, and it, you know, it doesn't have to be politically correct. And I, I want to word it in a way that people really understand what I'm trying to say. And this is going to be the challenge 
in my career and, and what I'm trying to do, which is to bring a light to um, like cultures or styles of music and fashion that are not necessarily given that intellectual respect. So let's say ratchet, that word ratchet is something I've been battling a lot with this summer. Yeah, and like what is this? Is that new? I'm hearing it. Like, it, it is, is to me, it's a relatively new term. It's like similar to ghetto. It's like, yeah, oh, similar okay. to ghetto. Okay. So like this summer, um, I've been battling with that term and what it means and the connotations it has. and and finding a beauty in the things that people are shunning as ratchet or ghetto, whether it be hairstyles, nails, fashions, types of music, genres of music, styles of music that are not necessarily talked about in a, I mean, in a positive light or given any kind of intellectual value to. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm trying to figure out now, and I've been thinking about this all summer, and I've been calling Professor Harris all summer, about mm -hmm. how to craft a career that is Allow with that passion to give a light to what people consider ghetto and ratchet. Which well, give me an example. What you what, a, a great example is Little Kim. Because I'm, 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 I'm going for Little Kim because I know you're coming from a. Exactly. I'm going for Little Kim because I know you're coming from a. I love Little Kim. You're coming from a fashion background, and I know that recently I read an article in 1997, Vogue, where they called Little Quim. The, the article was just called Ghetto Fabulous. And it was a picture of Little Kim, and it's talking about Little Kim and the relationships that she had with designers, and how for different like I think they they talked about the the Soul Train Award, where she came on with a like a cage around her head. I don't remember who designed that outfit, but it's things like um, you want an example? I'm trying to think of a good example. Well, I I know where you're going. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, but she's not she although she's giving credit to her music, she's not giving to her giving credit for her fashion ability or her fashion taste or her fashion styles, in my opinion. And something I'm working on now, I'm from Washington, D.C. I just went to a Chuck Brown show <laughs> yesterday. I just went to a Chuck Brown show yesterday, and I'm really passionate about go-go music, go-go culture, the economics of go-go, how it really, especially in the 80s and 90s, it really manifested a community, uh, a, a value and a respect for your city, as well as keeping money in the community, keeping money floating around, you know, establishing black businesses. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how can I, you know, maybe do some kind of, a, a, some, I don't know, an exhibit or something where I showcase the beauty in this music and this culture that is so into, that I'm so passionate person, about this. Yeah. So, and it's something I battle with all summer. So it's good that you're talking about dreams because these are definitely thoughts that I'm having, but I'm having difficulty putting them to paper or putting them to action. Well, I think you, the first step is to talk about it and to acknowledge it. But one thing, I think, Little Kim opened the door for Minaj, yeah, Nicki Minaj, and everybody, you know, and Lady Gaga, you know. I also think in this country, <clears throat> there's always going to be a level of racism. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be people that want to think what they want to think, no matter what you say, no matter how you battle, no matter what, that we're not going to be able to control. I do think that when you align and have an agency with your thinking, have it out there, that there's an option to that. Um, that would help kill all of the things that you just described, mm -hmm. you know, because it's just not going to change. And people are going to always think what they want to think, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, you're going to have your opinion of me no matter how much I say, yeah, you, you, you form opinions. And that's, that's what I love about where we are and where we live is that you have that freedom to do that. Um, we can connect you with this a um, black man. His name is Ron Bowen, mm -hmm. and Ron put together this studio where you can go in and record. It's like a hundred seat um, <clears throat> theater. Uh, you can do videos. We're going to do some work with him. I'll link you with him because I think Eric Benoit was there. Wasn't Chuck Brown's? Chuck Brown Day a couple days ago or something? I think I saw it because I read the post too. His birthday. Yeah, so that's a big thing. I mean, when I was your age, I would come from New York and New Jersey when I was for um, go go. Um, mm -hmm. They would have Georgia Avenue there or something. So um, it's good. You're on the right road. You're there about saving something that is 
a part of us and a part of our culture. And that's why I always talk about the Renaissance, because, you know, of course I wasn't there, but it's a pride that we have, you know, um, about who we are as black men and women, and that you have a responsibility. That's why I'm here. I have a responsibility to freely give to you what was freely given to me. And um, the light is not always shown, shine, which is the correct term, on you guys that are productive. I get so tired of seeing the killings and all of the things that are happening around the world. And for the most part, they're not coming with clean hands. When I say clean hands, that means not smoking weed, not in jail, not robbed somebody, not took somebody's pocketbook, not in school, starting stuff, stealing. That's clean hands. Not saying that it's right to take another person's life. But as a, as a young person, I remember the Civil Rights Movement. I was born in 1962. Megger Evers was a college student. The three civil rights, they were in college. They were, you know, some men and women were in the Air Force. They, they, they had not been in jail. And I'm not, I'm being departmental with you. I'm not saying that it's wrong to take someone's life. But what I'm saying is the clean hands. Like, I've done stuff. But my parents told me, my father told me, that if I ever got in trouble, his father didn't come to get him, and he wasn't coming to get me. Yeah. So when I got in trouble, he didn't. And I got out of it the best way that I could. And I learned from that day. So I commend you that you have enough thought about yourself aside from what your mom and dad has told you. To have that dream and to implement it and to say, you know what? Because it's very easy to get in trouble. It's very easy to hang out. It's very easy to do so. I know I was there. I did it. It's hard to stay on the road. It's hard to stay on the journey. Do you know what I mean? And surround yourself with people. And I noticed when everybody was talking, nobody was hating. Everybody was, unless she was doing it mentally. But <laughs> <laughs> what's she talking about? Um, that there has to be a community of people that see your dream not for them, but for you. Do you know what I mean? So that dialogue, I mean, Sharpton, Oprah, Obama, President Obama, they can't do it all. The police, they cannot do it. There has to be a community of people, myself, and especially coming behind me, of you guys going to your contemporaries and saying, when I go to DC Cross Radio Youth to talk to them, that you are coming with me. That they can take some of these, you have young men, black young men, from the ages of 16 to 22 that have committed adult crimes. Some of them are not getting out, some of them are. But the ones who are there for either the long haul or either for the time that they're there can be encouraged online. Whatever it is that we save our people, we save us. There's a disconnect, and uh, Professor Harrison and I were talking about how we failed our kids, or how we failed the generation. I can't emphasize when I see, you know, the stuff like when they asked Rosa Parks to, you know, for the civil to, to sit on the bus, she hadn't been to jail. She had not, you know, she, she, her hands were clean, because you're always going to have that opposition. What is the first thing that the media and the people say about these young people? Oh, well, he was trying to steal. Oh, he was high. Oh, he wasn't in school. And for the most part, these things are true. And that we, as people, are taking up for us in the wrong. That has to stop. If you're wrong, you're wrong. My parents would tell me, you're wrong. So, you know, when that changes, I think it will change with your generation. It will change with your generation of doing just what you said, with the event plan, that you will go out and you will get some of these young men and women 
who are coming back to the workforce now. My whole thing about fashion, there's enough men and women saying, you know, the right color to wear, is this color yellow for the season, I think you should be in there. There's enough of them. Now I do that so that I can eat. But my goal <laughs> is going to the reentry program. Those men and women who are coming back into the workforce who have been either battered, drugs, alcohol, and getting them prepared for interviews and getting them prepared so they can get back into society. We're going to the Harlem Justice Center, um, Create Inc. So that maybe their skill set is not as strong as yours, but that first impression when they see them in that little black dress and their hair is up in a bun and they're groomed properly and they sit down and, you know, there's certain things that you can do to distinguish yourself that's old. Like you can, a young woman can sit down and smooth her dress out. Or a young guy can sit down and pull up his pants and, you know, and have his cufflinks. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's going to distinguish you. Your matterings is about yourself. Lifestyle means where you work, where you live, your friends. It's not just about your clothes. And I think people get that mixed up. That you can just go by something fly and get out and just think that you're going to be. It's, it's not. It starts in here. I told you that when I was walking up uh, H Street and I looked at myself for the first time. And I've been looking at myself in the mirror the time I got up. But I looked at myself and I was like, that's not you. There's something wrong. You need help. And it doesn't mean that you always have to be on drugs or you're on alcohol. It may be something that's innate in you that you don't like or something that's not that's been discovered. And then you, you come in and you, you should, everybody should be writing. Everybody should have a journal. I have a journal. I write every day, if not every day, once a week. And you see your dreams. You see what you've changed. You see what you want to do. All of those kinds of things. It's inside. And then once that is, it's an ongoing process, it's the outside. It's your skin, hair, your teeth. All of those things. If you have on a $25,000 Dolce Gabbana dress and you all humped over and you have on the wrong bra and your teeth are all broke up, we're not going to see it. We're going to see people see what's wrong first. You see what's wrong. Like, oh, we don't see the dress. But you can have a $25 dress on and walk upright and have on the right undergarments and feel good about yourself and walk in and have a presence. You should have a presence about yourself. Not, you know, oh, I'm bad. I a presence means there is something about you that is not like you. Does that make sense? Yes. That it's, it's, it's really about you. Um, I was too bad to be at the project. But um, my name is Taisha Kennedy. Um, I'm from D.C. And um, it's my station. I have like two two things I want to touch on because what you just said just now just struck me a little bit. I have two brothers, two younger brothers that I took care of and I practically raised, and uh, we were always in that um, we were always in a place where they wanted things that they couldn't have, and so their big things are shoes for some reason with boys. And of course we couldn't afford Jordans or whatever the case may have been, but I've always had them in a process where they could find things of the same nature, but just not in the same price range. So I find myself not trying to be like mom, like, oh yeah, I don't have this, 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 and that, but we need a, a pair of Jordans, but let's go to another shelf and see what else you can get, because we, I'm not spending $200 on a pair of shoes. So um, that was kind of like a good point for me because that mostly I spent a lot of my time trying to get them to understand it. And the older one, he's uh, 15, about to be 16, he's kind of in, he's kind of understanding, but he still isn't at that point yet. So that was my big thing that I, um, that's one of my goals as far as dreams with my brothers, just hoping that they know that everything doesn't have to be what it looks like, or you don't have to spend a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars, because you can get that same shirt for five dollars, ten dollars. So we go thrifting a lot, and so um, uh, they love to thrift now, so I'm excited. But um, just for my dreams, I have um, a big passion for kids in the arts who don't have the money to be in the arts. So um, I worked down the 
Forest Street on Georgia Avenue with a whole bunch of kids every year, and they basically start the program off having nothing. And by the end of the program, it's all of these kids who love each other and understand each other's story, stories, but they have nothing. So we just go from there. So um, my biggest goal is just using what I've learned to change other lives and to help people who were in the same predicament as me. Because even when I was younger and I was trying to be like whomever on the TV, I didn't, I knew that I didn't have, financially, I couldn't be where I wanted to be. So that's just my goal is trying to change lives and be in, be in my little brother's faces about what the world holds because we're in a generation now where it's kind of like everything's accepted. So you can't really tell them no because that's what's being put up. So, yeah. It's that extra effort um, of change of the way of thinking um, that was that I try to present even when I'm, when I'm talking to, to your contemporaries is that um, if you can't, you know, everybody, I want Jordan's, I want this, and I want that. If you can't develop in yourself, or when you're seeing these shows, do not say how's the principle. I'm always thinking business-wise. Um, to me, Beyonce is not that great of a singer, but she's a fabulous entertainer. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? And instead of implementing, instead of like worshiping these people, I mean, it's okay to enjoy them. Try to take the business part from it. Because who wants to spend the rest of their time, the rest of your life? It's my yes, <laughs> exactly. When you can have that money, that's why I'm, 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 my, my time where I am now is coming to a close. Because we have to sell $5,000 a week before we get commission on anything else. Do you know how hard it is to sell $5,000 worth of stuff in this economy and in August and January? And I'm in New York at the flagship store, so the people who can afford that price point are not in New York, they're in the Hamptons. So what am I going to do? Take the clothes up there and hand out me? You can't do it. <laughs> and also, too, this is how I think. Why am I going to make you $5,000? I only get three fifty. dollars When I can make $5,000, you can even keep it up. Now, some people, that's what they're going to do. You know, they can hustle and they pull that. That's not me. If you want to bring it to the register, I'll bring it out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm past that. Oh, this looks great on you. Hey, would you, did you, have you seen this? You can get 2,000 points. Uh, in my mind, I can be saying, oh, you can go, you know, I can personally shop for you at $85 an hour, minimum four hours, or I can do an event for you, you can engage me for $1,500, and then hourly is $65. That's for me. That's for George Orwell, LLC. That's Axe. I don't know, that's how I think. And I'm not saying that you don't have to do these jobs and all this other kind of stuff to, you, you have to finance your dreams. But at this point with my business plan, I'm looking, you know, you do investors, you do, I'm even doing crowdfunding. I'm trying, I wrote my second book, my first book was um, On the Other Side of Style. And um, that was two years ago, maybe three years ago. So this one is called I'm Still Here. And it talks about, you know, you see all of these books at the beginning. Oh, Lost, what am I going to do? Blah, blah, blah. And then you'll see the ending. Oh, everything's fabulous. Everything's great. This is where I came from. But what about in the middle? What about where you're not where you've been, but you're not where you want to be? What happens then? What happens when you have uh, $175 and your phone bill is $170 and you have to eat? What do you do? Do you do the payment arrangements? Or do you do like my southern parents do? I go and give me some neck bones and some black eyed peas and some rice and some jiffy muffin mix and I eat all week and I make payment arrangements and I do yep. what I gotta do because if somebody calls and says that they want me to come for a job, I gotta keep my phone on. Is this the things that we talk about? That's what the book is about. Nobody talks about that. Everybody talks about, oh, I'm so bad. oh my god, I'm in jail. And then you go, hey, I'm fabulous. I used to be in jail, and this is what I'm doing now. What about the middle? 
to sacrifice that at 50 years old, I moved from Washington, D.C. to New York. I moved to Harlem for a sublet that I saw on Craigslist. I have no job, I have very little savings, but I have a dream. I want to be on television, I want to do my thing. I know that I'm good. Ain't nobody told me I'm good, but I know I'm good. <laughs> Ain't nobody hire me, but I know I'm good. I know I, I can do my thing. I know I got a story. I know it's marketable. I know somebody's going to listen and somebody's going to identify. I walked from 139th to 39th Street because I had an interview and I didn't have any money. Do I doubt myself because at 50 years old I have a very limited budget and nothing's happening? No, I don't. I encourage myself because Mama may not be there, and you may not be there to say, it's going to be all right, baby, you're going to be okay. But I have to tell myself that when I get up, oh, it is okay. <laughs> it's all right. You keep doing what you're doing. I have a personal faith. I'm not so much religious, but I have a strong faith in I have power. I know what I know. Because if it was meant for me not to be here, I would not be. If the message was not clear, if I didn't have something to say, that I think could resonate and somebody would have that aha moment, I live for the aha moment. The aha moment when you get it, when something makes sense, and you're like, hmm, that's where the piece is missing. And you, phew, you go there. Do you know what I mean? That makes all of that difference. Aside with everybody else, I have communion says, because it's about telling someone and telling our men and women that yes, you can. You don't have to do what Madison Avenue says don't have to just because you see it on television get it. It's about what you want. If we stop doing that, then they wouldn't have so much power. Do you know how many drug dealers I see come into Saks with stacks of young people and old people's money? It smells like they got it out of a tobacco bar. Mm. And they walking around, pants hanging on, cursing, no respect, nothing, buying MCM, Gucci, and everything else from the money from out here because people are lost and don't know and no dreams and no hope. So they don't care. They don't care. They, we, we all need the help. So it's these little talks like this for me to get feedback because